What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have two big pieces of breaking news to talk to you about today that has just happened. We're going to go ahead and start with what we have from the National Hurricane Center. We have our first area of interest. Well, and well, we had one previously, but we have our first uh, area of interest that is around hurricane season. We had one back last month, but it really didn't do very much, and it kind of fizzled out, but we have... As of May 23rd, our first area of uh, of interest uh, that is pretty much not in the Atlantic as over the Caribbean and everything like that. And with that being said, the Pat's Path Predictor hurricane season coverage starts today almost daily. I'm not 100% sure. There's going to be a, a few things I'm going to need to work around for this uh, these upcoming next few days as I'm going to be have a, having a pretty busy schedule. But I'm, I am going to start ramping up the hurricane season forecasts and the tropical weather updates as the time continues to go on. So we're going to be paying attention to that. But anyway, here's the situation that we have going on so far right here. We currently have a 10% risk of development right now, a 10% probability as of right now for the next seven days and the next 48 hours for the southwestern Atlantic. A large area of cloudiness and showers over the southwestern uh, Atlantic associated with a surface trough is currently visible. An area of low pressure is expected to form with the system a few hundred miles north of Hispaniola. Environmental conditions are not expected to be conducive. However, some slight tropical or subtropical developments is possible while the low moves northeastward through the weekend. Formation chance, once again, is about 10% right there. If we go ahead and show you on satellite, this is what we have right there. Overall, not particularly that impressive. But now that we have our first area of interest, tropical storm, uh, tropical weather coverage starts now. So that's the first big piece of, of, of major news that we have right there. And we'll go ahead and first go ahead and take a look at some of the modeling and kind of see what, what's, being, what's driving behind uh, this as well. What's kind of going to be driving this, we're going to have easily a lot of global sea temperatures 28 degrees Celsius where it is right now. It is expected to be moving into cooler waters, which is one of the reasons why I think it's going to be at a 10% risk, and I don't see a massive pop probability of it organizing and developing unless it does it right now and overcomes all the shear that's going on Right with it right here. This is what we have with the wind shear map as right now. Yeah, it's battling right now like 30 to 40 knots, and it's expected to increase to up to 60 knots of wind shear at this current point in time. There is a little bit of weaker wind shear to its west, but it's going to be not be being influenced by that, and it's going to be battling a ton of wind shear, which is why that there's not really that much of a probability of this thing organizing and developing. So that's one thing I'm paying attention to. Uh, paying attention to another thing I want to take a look at as well is the dry air, kind of like what the moisture component of all this is looking like right here. So we can go ahead and do that. Let me check that. Uh, there we go. We can go ahead and kind of see what the dry air is looking like right now with the relative humidity, uh, humidity according to this. There is a quite a bit of moisture that it's working with, and I think that's why the NHE is giving it its 10% probability risk. But as we continue to move on for the next couple of days, let's start at 24 hours, still quite there. There's still a pretty decent pocket of that stuff, but there is going to be some drier air intruding into it in the next two or three days. So overall, I would say if it wants to develop, it has probably 36 to 48 hours to do that max, and then it's going to fizzle out, and we'll be keeping you updated in the next couple of days with that. But that, with that being said, we're also going to go ahead and show you some models of what this thing's going to be looking like. We're going to start with the European just to kind of give you a general uh, glance of what we're looking at. We're going to be looking at this. We're going to be looking at the AI version of it, the GFS, as well as the other models like the CMC, the Navgem, and the Icon the five typical models that we used last year, as well as the AI model that we're going to be using this year. So that's what we have going on right there. Europeans really not showing any signs of organization or development at this current point in time. It's kind of meandering out there, not particularly doing that much in the next four days. And I genuinely wouldn't expect much to happen. If we go ahead and show you the, you know, the European AI model right here, this is what we have. We're going to go ahead and show you the 0Z for some consistency with this. The AI model is really not showing much either. So I would disregard this GFS. What's the GFS looking like? I know 
I'm not a massive fan of the GFS, but the GFS, interestingly, gets this down to 1,006 millibars, which I find is kind of interesting. It's definitely stronger than the rest of the systems are at this current point, so we'll have to pay attention to it, but I would take the GFS with a grain of salt any day of the week. Canadian model, we're going to go ahead and show you that as well. Canadian model, really not showing you very much. Uh, the Navgem model, what's this going to be showing? Overall, not very much. There is a possibility of maybe a little bit of development. It gets down to 1,009, but that's about it right there. So that's the uh, that's about it. So there's that. And then, I, and then the Icon model, we can show you that. Yeah, not very strong development. Maybe down to 1,008 or something like that. So there is some models that have this thing possibly developing, but it's going to be over the water. It shouldn't be a concern to anyone. And it's something that it's definitely something to look at, but nothing to really hype up about. However, what there is, there is something to hype up about a little bit. And this is what the another second piece of big news that I have for you. The National Oceanic Admi Ad Atmospheric Administration, I apologize for stuttering like that, has issued their 2024 Atlantic hurricane season, their first one, and they predict an above average hurricane season. I've been saying this the last two times, above average is turning into the new average. We saw that in 2021 we saw it was around average in 2022 what we saw that last year and it looks like we are going to see that next this year la nina and warmer than average ocean temperatures are the main drivers of tropical activity and speaking of warm uh, warmer than water uh, warmer averages i had several people that uh, several people show me this graphic. My stepdad showed this to me. People in Storms United showed this to me. Shout out to SPC Master and Ethan WX for showing this to me, as well as my stepdad. I really appreciate you giving me this graphic right here. This is compare. This is what we had as of May 14th and May 20th back in 2005, which was the year where we had such an awful hurricane uh, season. We had Katrina that year. We had Rita. We had Wilma. We went into the Greek alphabet for the first time. We also had Hurricane Emily, which was a Cat 5, but didn't do very much. We also had Hurricane Dennis that hit the Florida Panhandle. My stepdad uh, survived that. Uh, he's... Uh, he's been through quite a bit when he lived in Florida, but so shout out to him. But anyway, this is what we have going on right here. Back in 2005, a lot of the warmer than average SSTs were concentrated around the main development region, particularly in the in the western half of the MDR and into the Caribbean a little bit. But overall, while this is very scary, this in itself is pretty scary. We were getting close to the record warmest at this current point. It overall, uh, overall, it pales in comparison to what we have in 2024. 2024, we have a much larger area, especially in the main development region, of pretty much uh, of pretty much record warm sea surface temperatures and record high ocean heat content at this current point in time. I was talking to David Schlothauer about this. We're finding OHC values in the Caribbean almost cracking 100 joules per kilogram already, which for those uh, for those of you who do not know, that's pretty much the amount of fuel and uh, measured by how warm the water is and how deep that water goes. So yeah, the fact that we're already in its already on, not only even not even june yet and we're already cracking 100 in a few areas is pretty concerning to say the very least and the reason we have all of this record warm right here is because of last hurricane season patrick what happened last hurricane season well what happened was we had 20 named storms but not a single one of them outside of brett and tammy i think entered into the caribbean and because no storms entered into the Caribbean, all that 30 plus degrees Celsius water we saw last year, all that 200 plus OHC that we saw sitting there last year, wasn't cooled off and it wasn't used. All of that is resulting in quite a scary scenario because hurricanes are a double-edged sword. Yes, they cause a lot of damage if they hit land, but they also cool the water temperatures even if it's temporarily or if it's like for a few weeks or so. That didn't happen this year in the Caribbean. We had that with Ian in 2022. We had that with Ida to some extent in 2021, but it didn't happen last year because no hurricanes made it into the Caribbean. And all that 30 plus degree water did cool off a little bit, but it only got down to about 27 degrees Celsius, whereas an average, it would get down to maybe like 25, 24, maybe as low as 23 Celsius, which for those of you in the United States, that's in the low, that's in the mid 70s right there. 
80 degrees is uh, Fahrenheit is what you need is the kind of your good uh, a good place for development. It can't happen in 26 degrees Celsius or 78 degree water or below, but 80 is your magic number. I know I'm rambling about this too much, so I'm going to kind of sum this up in one little one short sentence. Because the Caribbean was untapped last year and because nothing went through it, all that warm water sat there and it's starting to go up again. That's why when you see all these global sea temperatures right here, we're already 0.3 degrees Celsius above last year. And that was a record setting sea surface temperature year right there. And if this trajectory continues, this is where we were at last year. We were at 25.4 degrees Celsius, which is 77.7 degrees Fahrenheit, not just in one area, but across the Atlantic Ocean. If this continues at the pace that it's going, we're easily going to beat that. And that means there's going to be more ocean heat content and more fuel for hurricanes. Coupled with the La Nina that is still starting to on go right now, I believe we are in a neutral phase unofficially at this point. The one and two, the regions one and two right now are well below the neutral. They're in a La Nina, and that's just off the coast of Peru to the Galapagos Islands and the areas around there. Areas three and four are starting to get into the neutral and get below average. Region four, which is why this was still in El Nino, is now at point uh, plus point four nine eight degrees. That has met the the that has met the National Weather Service well not the NWS but NOAA's threshold of neutral right there. We're not it's going to probably still decrease slowly, but at this current point we're rapidly shifting into La Nina, and that's why this is uh, this is what it's going with. Look at these stats right here: total named storms, seventeen to twenty five named storms. If we go back to 2020, I want to take a look at this right here. If I can, if I can, we're going to go ahead and look at the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. I want to see what their prediction was for that. Let's if we can. This is around May 20th. This is Noah's 13 to 19. And remember, 2020 had 30 named storms. At that, at this point in 2020, Noah was just estimating 13 to 19. We didn't expect. A massive amount of uh, organization to happen. Now we're going into 2024. We're looking at 17 to 25 named storms, of which 8 to 13 are expected to become hurricanes, which is pretty concerning to say at the very least. 4 to 7 are expected to become major hurricanes. Compare that to their forecast in 2020 6 to 10 and 3 to 6. So we are seeing quite a massive jump from just four years ago. And this is just one of their forecasts right here. If it gets up to 25 named storms, that means we expend the entire first list of the hurricane names. And we go to the auxiliary list. It used to be the Greek alphabet, but it got retired in 2021 because of hurricanes Ada and Iota. That just absolutely destroyed Nicaragua. So that's what we have. And this is the list of names right here. Alberto, Burl, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, Gordon, Helene, Isaac, Isaac's still there. Your I named Storm is still there. Got to pay attention to that. Hey, Patty's in there as well. Although that's uh, that is a lady's uh, lady's name, so that's going to be interesting. Tony's in there as well. Um, so that's going to be quite fun to look at. Anyway, here's the latest tools for that the NHC is going to be using. They're going to be using two new models according to this to that will predict the probability of rapid intensification. I really like this idea. I hope it goes through, and I hope we can uh, uh, not allow another scenario like Otis to happen from last year. The new flood induation map, which was made possible through President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law, finally something good came out of that, no politics intended. Uh, this will provide information for emergency water managers and, to, uh, and re to respond to potential flooding and help local officials better prepare to protect people for, and infrastructure. I took river systems and landforms last year. That was one of my uh, last semester. That's one of my cor courses that I took that I really enjoy. I shout out my professor for teaching me a lot of this. I think considering the threat hurricanes post, especially flooding, we saw that with Matthew. We saw that with Harvey. We saw that with Florence. We saw that with Sally. We saw that with Ida. We saw that with so many examples. I think this is a good thing to implement, especially for those who are inland. And now here's what we have right there. They'll be in part, uh, they'll be issuing an experimental rainfall graphic for the Caribbean and Central America during the 2024 hurricane season. Brilliant. If they can put this in Spanish as well, even more perfect. 
because if we can ter- put this give this to Span- put this in Spanish like put Spanish subtitles or Spanish words into uh, into it and give it to the governments of these Central American countries that'll be perfect as well as the Caribbean and everything like that. So yeah, that's the latest news that we have right now for hurricane season right there. Pat's Path Predictor coverage of the tropics has officially began, ladies and gentlemen. I was making some hurricane forecasts and everything like that, but now we're switching over to mainly coverage of this. So just to give you a heads up, we are still going to be covering severe weather as there is going to be a large amount of uh, a large threat of severe weather in the next few days. We're still going to still going to be keeping an eye on it and we might uh, do a few things uh, here and there with videos and all that stuff as if they are warranted. But yeah, we're going to mainly be transitioning to tropical because those two things just happened and we will continue to keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. With that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel, as always, is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.